our baseball teams in the state championship, mm -hmm. which is amazing. That's amazing comeback on Sunday. I heard about that. It's huge, yeah. They lost their first game. Eight nothing down six nothing in the sec in the second game and somehow magic occurred and it's seven six and, mm -hmm. and I left to get the train. I know of a cure for almost every birth de defect and disease you could think of. From diabetes to cancer, stem cells have this hold the secret to curing almost every ailment. I am here today to convince you that we should continue to do stem cell research and use it to treat human diseases. I have researched a topic for a few weeks now, and everyone who knows someone or has experienced for themselves the devastating effects that disease can have on a person's body. Today, I'll explain a little bit about what stem cells are, how, what the research is dealing with, what the benefits are, how the stem cells research has developed, and how we continue to get results from stem cell research. There are many different ways, or there are many different types of cells in your body, but they all come from stem cells. Stem cells are capable of renewing themselves by division, cell division. When a stem cell divides, it can differentiate into any cell in your body, a lung cell, a nerve cell, a kidney cell, any cell in your body, depending on what the DNA tells it to do. In experimental conditions in the lab, we can take these cells and culture them and get them to divide enough times to create a tissue that can is specific to any organ in the human's body. According to the National Institute of Health, in some organs such as the gut and bone marrow, stem cells regularly divide and re to repair and replace. Worn out or damaged tissues. In other organs, however, such as the pancreas and the heart, Stem cells do not divide as fast, and they only divide under special conditions. This means that if we could grow the stem cells in the lab, we could ultimately create tissues that could replace any damaged tissue in the human body. And we could essentially cure a wide variety of incurable diseases. There are two types of stem cells used in stem cell research. Embryonic stem cells and stem cells that come from an adult human called somatic adult stem cells. The distinction between these stem cells is where, where most controversy comes about. First, let's talk about the two stem, types of stem cells. Somatic stem cells come from an adult human and are relatively rare cells that are found in each individual organ, but these cells cannot differentiate into different cells. So if a stem cell divided and created a new liver cell, it couldn't those stem cells could not divide and create a brain cell. But in the lab, we can do this. Um, according to the National Health Institute, scientists discovered a ways to derive embryonic stem cells from early mouse embryos nearly 30 years ago in 1981. In 1998, the detailed study of the biology of mouse stem cells led to the discovery of a method to derive stem cells from human embryos and grow the cells in the lab. These cells are called human embryonic stem cells. The, the embryos used in these studies were created for the reproductive purposes of or in vitro fertilization. When they were no longer needed, they were donated to science and then with their informed consent of the donor, given to stem cell research. People believe that these cells are, the use of these cells are unethical because it's the ending of develop, or development of life. But it really comes down to when you believe that life begins. The stem cells are harvested from a three to five day old embryo called a blastocyst. It has no nerves to feel or lungs to breathe air. It's essentially the same as a tumor, a ball of cells. So what do these cells do? In March 2009, President Obama signed an executive order reversing the President Bush's order limiting stem cell research. This was a step in the right direction for providing more money to stem cell research, which has many benefits. According to Stem Cell Seeds of Hope, an article written by Life Science, stem cells have a potential to cure spinal cord disorders, diabetes, bone disorders, and liver disease. They could, use to, they could be used to grow and replace damaged organs, repair massive amounts of skin, and can even be used in gene therapy. Because many diseases and birth defects happen because of a certain type of cell is not growing or functioning correctly, 
by implanting the stem cells into that location, we can virtually correct, <laughs> implanting the stem cells, we can virtually end the process a person must go through to get a organ transplant, or we could even correct birth defects in a child and have them live a completely normal life with just implanting the stem cells where the damaged ones are found. The benefits of stem cells are only limited by our knowledge of how they work. So stem cells could be, mean life for so many people, but what m many people don't know is the dispute about stem cell research ending a possible life can now be put to rest with the development of, the of a new method of extracting stem cells. In August 2013, or in August 23rd, 2006, an online, <laughs> an online edition of Nature Scientific Journal, letter of, a letter published by Dr. Robert Lanza, a previous study in mice indicates that it might be possible to generate an embryonic stem cell using a single cell biopsy, which does not interfere with the embryo's developmental potential. According to the study, it is now possible to extract a single stem cell and then grow it into a tissue in the lab without causing any damage to the embryo. So now we can get stem cells without any controversy. So what's the next step for developing the cures? Research in this step, research is the next step. Getting research funded for stem cell research is essential for developing new cures. The more money given to this research, the more studies can be done and we can grow our knowledge about how stem cells differentiate. With growing support for stem cell research, there is now hope for a possibility for more funding. Even the Supreme Court now backs stem cell research. According to CNN's webpage discussing dismissal of a Supreme Court case against funding this research. The brief order from the justices is a victory for supporters of federally funded testing to combat a range of diseases and illnesses. Federal courts had previously lifted an injunction on continued funding, and the latest high court action probably means the lawsuit will be ultimately dismissed. Thankfully, this means that in the eyes of the court, stem cell research is no longer disputed and will be allowed to continue and have access to more funding. However, as we have seen in the past with President George W. Bush, public opinions could oppress the development of this research and we could be without needed cures for even longer. Stem cell research is the gateway to ending the sufferings of countless people from illness. The more we know about stem cells and their function, the more we can start to make a difference. Breakthroughs are possible with enough research and consistency. I have hope that I've convinced you today why supporting stem cell research is so important. So Kelly, what did you think? Device, like showing like how all these diseases can be cured. Um, you showed your thesis clearly. Uh, preview was laid out well. Um, your main points were clear, and you had a lot of supporting material behind it. Like um, also showing the alternatives to like the controversy of stem cell like research. Um, I thought it was great. All right, uh, well, you pretty clearly state your goal. It's really about additional funding and continuing the, the research on stem cells. Uh, the background information is okay, kind of explaining what's going on and talking about the controversy. However, ultimately, you dismiss the controversy, saying that it's basically been resolved. So if, if there isn't a, a dispute about the ethical issues anymore, then what is the barrier that exists? The, there is no court challenge to it. The ethical dispute has mostly been eliminated. So why is not more money being go, going to stem cell research? That's the issue that I think that you need to work on a little bit more in the argument. Um, you do list all of the potential promise that stem cells have, and I think that that's one of those things that uh, frequently gets mentioned. I do think you need to show, for instance, that we are making um, uh, breakthroughs on these sorts of things and, and demonstrate that we're getting a return on the investment because uh, 
Well, like you said, this has been going on since 1981, and we've been hearing those promises since 1981, and so I think we need to see some uh, illustration that this has happened. I, just to give a, a quick example, California passed, I think it was in 2004, 2005, one of those years that we had it on the ballot, you know, maybe it was 2006, uh, a, a bill to fund stem cell research here in California. We're supposed to get all these returns from it, and, you know, that was a $6 billion bond that we supported, and it's been almost 10 years, so what's going on? What's happening? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, we've spent millions, billions of dollars funding stem cell research uh, since since 2001 we've been doing this and it increased some more uh, after Obama lifted some of the restrictions so we got even more money spent on that so show us show us some of that medical progress so that it's not just this pie in the sky kind of stuff that's going on you talked about adult stem cells and then all of a sudden the next thing I know you were talking about the embryonic stem cells and I don't, I don't know why we're pursuing one over the other. I mean, I, you do give an explanation about what the limitations are on adult stem cells. Uh, the, the thing that I think is interesting, though, is that we've got a lot of data on results from adult stem cell research, and we don't have the data for the embryonic stem cell research, but the promise of the embryonic is so greater, that's, the, that's really where the issue goes to. And so people are looking at this and say, well, if, we, if we're spending the money here and we're getting results, and this is all just, you know, I, I swear it's going to be better. I swear it's going to be better. But I, over here, I'm getting this other thing. People are going to say, well, maybe we should spend the money in the practical place. And that's where you have to kind of give us a little bit of shift that's going on there. I, I thought that at the end, when you talked about the potential future problem, I didn't quite understand that. I, it seems like you've suggested that this has been resolved by the medical technologies that allow us to do this. So it's unlikely that anybody's going to have these objections again. Uh, if, if that's been resolved, then I'm not sure what the future problem is that you're talking about at the end. Your delivery is not good at this point in the semester. You are reading too much. You are having to look at your notes. You need to be a little bit more engaged in your presentation. I mean, we're, we're just a couple weeks away from being at the end, and you, and you really need to be in, in better shape on these kinds of things. So I, I think you had good research in the presentation. I think there's pretty good structure, but uh, the delivery here is undermining your credibility, and you need to do a better job on that. All right. Thank you.